All right, so in this video, we are introducing the conics. You may or may not have seen these before in geometry class, but we are going to dig a little bit deeper. Um, we are going to be looking at the double napes cone, which is, uh, we will talk about in a second what exactly that is. And um, we're going to look at how cutting that cone and uh, uh, how cutting that cone is going to give you one of these four conic sections. We have the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And there are some other ones called the degenerate cases, but those are just uh, subsections of the above four. All right, so we are going to jump in this right now. This is going to be a quick video. We are just overviewing, and then in, in subsequent videos, we will dig into each of these. So here it is. Here's a double-naped cone. It is a cone, uh, two cones specifically, that share a, uh, a, a vertex. And uh, this cone is actually created by taking this line here. Give me one second. This line here, yes, it's a line. And uh, this axis of symmetry right here. So let's give these things names. I'm going to say this is L and this will be M. -M. And I am taking L and I am rotating it around this axis of symmetry, thus creating a cone. But because it is a line, I'm creating two cones that have a shared vertex. And this cone, or these cones, go in, uh, the, uh, in the upper and lower directions forever. This is an infinitely large set of cones. We call this a double-naped cone. Um, the most important thing here uh, in this construction is not only the two lines, but the angle between them. I'm going to go ahead and call the angle between them alpha. So we have two lines, L and M, and an angle between them, alpha. All right. this, uh, uh, this could change, thus creating different sized cones. With all that said, what is a conic section? A conic section is the cross section crea or, uh, sorry, created by taking a plane all right this plane is also infinite all right this plane has some uh, geometric uh, attributes as well that I'll discuss in a second but this conic section cuts this uh, sorry this plane cuts this conic section and it creates a cross section so what's this going to look like I'm going to have a cone And this, uh, this uh, plane is creating some sort of shape out of this cone. And that cross section, right? So we're going to have a top part too. Right? This shape right here, and this is congruent to this, just my drawing is not the best. This shape is a conic section. And this one is actually an ellipse. Um, but we are able to get different shapes. So we are cutting a double-naped cone with a plane. This plane right here is making a specific angle with the line M as well. So we have the line M. I'm just moving this picture over here to make a, uh, a point. This plane is making an angle with the line M. We're going to go ahead and call that angle, I'm going to go ahead and make it blue, we're going to call this angle beta. All right, so this angle down here that this plane is making, we're going to call that beta. All right? It is a little bit difficult to imagine, um, especially with uh, my subpar drawing, but uh, this angle here is beta. And what we care about is the relationship between alpha and beta. Well, uh, compare their sizes and see if the one is less than the other or if they are equal. And that will determine which conic section we get. And the last thing I'm going to say on this page before I proceed and we look at the different conic sections um, is that this angle beta is going to be less than or equal to 90. Right? The second it's bigger than 90, uh, the other angle will be acute, and we can then think about that angle instead. So we're always going to be looking at beta as if it were less than or equal to 90. All right, so we're here again, and we have um, the angle alpha. Now, the next few pages, I'll just I'll start with the angle alpha. Um, but we have the angle alpha here, 
and uh, we are going to cut this cone at a 90 degree angle. All right, we're going to look at if beta is equal to 90 degrees. So what does that mean? That means our plane is uh, just going straight across. Let me uh, have some dotted lines there, but then I'll have solid lines now. All right, cool. So we are cutting this cone straight across. The angle that is being made here with the line is a 90 degree angle. That is a perpendicular angle. When we cut at a 90 degree angle, we get a circle. All right, I think it's be best shown um, if I draw it over here. Here's my cone. Here's this cross section. We have cut it just straight off the top. We have truncated this cone and we are getting a, a circle. Cool. So uh, this, when B is 90 degrees, we get a circle. This is the first of the four conic sections, um, the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. So let's go ahead and change beta now to something less than 90, but greater than alpha. All right, so I need to cut this cone here um, at an angle that is less than 90. but also greater than alpha. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line and then I'm gonna draw my plane. Okay, so this right here, this dotted line, that is uh, greater than alpha, but also less than 90. Right, this angle right here is the angle beta. Cool. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and construct my plane. Cool. And as I had drawn earlier this time, we are getting um, an elongated circle, right? And this is an ellipse. We are getting an ellipse here. Right, what this looks like is I have a cone. And I've already drawn this picture, but I'm just going to draw it one more time. Get this a little bit higher up. And we are getting a nice um, cone. And, and what this looks like, I should have drawn a circle on the previous page, but I'll go ahead and uh, draw a uh, top view of the ellipse. This is, um, it's a little bit, uh, it's like a stretched out circle. All right, almost like an oval, uh, but it has special properties, so we're not going to go ahead and call it an oval. All right, but uh, this is our ellipse. All right, now let's look and see what happens when alpha and beta are equal. What happens when alpha and beta are equal? So I'm going to go ahead and draw this dotted line. Um, but the problem is uh, I can't start over here because if I start in this space over here, I will always be less than alpha. I have to start down here. And if alpha and beta are equal, I'm actually going to get... Uh, two parallel lines. This yellow dotted line is going to be parallel to that line L that I had established in the beginning. Remember this line L right here? This was M, right? This line L and this construction line uh, that's yellow, I'll call it Y, is parallel to L. All right, so let me go ahead and finish my plane that is slicing this thing. All right, here's my plane. Right. The problem with this plane, though, is once it hits the uh, the the, uh, the uh, double naped cone, it's never going to um, escape the double naped cone. So this one's actually going to go down forever. We're never actually going to finish cutting this infinite cone. And what does that mean? We are getting a parabola 
So drawing this is a little bit more difficult, but um, I have my cone, right? And I'm going to uh, cut off an infinite amount of it. So this cone's going down forever, and I'm getting something that looks like a this. Right, so this shape right here, and I always could do a better job, but I, I do the best that I can. This cross section right here is the parabola. And you've heard the word parabola before. This has all of the same algebraic properties. All right, as I move over and um, as I move over from this vertex point, I am growing at the square of something. Uh, but this is the uh, uh, f uh, top view of this cross section. And this, once again, goes on forever because this cone goes on forever. This is the parabola. And the final scenario, when beta is less than alpha, when that angle that the uh, plane makes with the uh, the the original uh, axis of symmetry is smaller than alpha. So what does that look like with a dotted line? That's going to look like um, this, right? And this angle right here. This angle right here, it's kind of hard to see. This angle right here is my beta. And what you'll notice with this cross section is this is the first and only cross section that actually hits both cones, right? In all the other examples, the circle, we only slice the bottom cone. Or we could have sliced the top cone, but I chose to slice the bottom one. In the uh, ellipse, we only slice the bottom one. In the parabola, we slice the bottom one, and we never stopped slicing, but we never got to the top one. The hyperbola is the conic section that comes from slicing both. And I just spent like five minutes trying to sketch, as I did for the other ones, the uh, cross section. And it was way too difficult, especially with the upside down cone. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what this one ends up looking like, the cross section. Right? You never actually escape either cone. So you will have some sort of figure that goes on forever. And it's going to look, you might be like, oh, that's a parabola. There's a second one up here, right? Because there's two cones. Right? This is the top view of a hyperbola. The hyperbola comes from when that angle B is smaller than the angle alpha. And if uh, the angle B is zero, or in other words, this yellow dotted line never actually goes through, um, yeah, never actually goes through this uh, vertical line of symmetry, um, this, this, this construction line, uh, we are still going going to get a hyperbola. We're still going to get a chunk cut off here and a chunk cut off down here. All right, so that is when beta is less than alpha. And beta is allowed to be equal to zero. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video are the degenerate cases. De I spelled that wrong. Degen. There's an N there. Uh, de oops. The degenerate cases. Cool. Cool. Um, and that is when you cut this cone in a very unique way. Uh, one of the ways is um, if you just go ahead and cut this straight through that vertex right there, that apex, all right? What would you get? Uh, the first degenerate case is the point, right? You don't get any cross section. You just get a point. I'll draw a little point there. Uh, the second one, I'm going to go actually go ahead and change the color. That's just for my sake. Uh, the second one is going to be um, the line. And that is if I cut um, like a parabola parallel to the uh, that angle. So the angle alpha and the angle B, uh, beta are going to be the same. But instead of actually cutting through the two cones or cutting through either cones, I'm just going to be cutting along this 
surface right here, right on the surface, the edge of the cone, and that is going to be a line. All right, and that line is going to have slope um, equal to the uh, angle that constructed this this uh, this double naped cone. And the third and final one, the third degenerate case is the pair of lines. And that is um, a, a degenerate case. Uh, oh, let me say this. The point is a degenerate case of the circle or the ellipse. Um, I don't actually have to cut it at a 90 degree angle. I could cut it a um, between alpha and, um, what is it? Between alpha just being, sorry, beta being, I'm losing my words. Beta being less than 90, uh, but greater than alpha, I can cut and get that point. Uh, so the point is a degenerate case for the ellipse and the circle. The line is a degenerate case for the parabola. The pair of lines is a degenerate case for the hyperbola, which is when uh, you cut through the center and the two cones. So it's going to be a pair of lines that go through the center. All right, let me see if I can get this nicely. All right, and that's if the plane um, is cutting it in a way that goes through the or sorry the the, the vertex, but also through the both cones, through both cones, not on the surface. So that's going to give us a pair of lines. All right, so these are the three degenerate cases, and these are the conic sections, the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And then um, the degenerate cases are the uh, double pair of lines for the hyperbola, the single line for the parabola, and the point for the circle and the ellipse. So they're your conic sections. Uh, this one ended up being a little bit longer than I wanted, sorry. Uh, but I wanted to do a little bit of an intro so that we can come back to this later, right? The next video, we're going to dig into the parabola. And uh, then we're going to hit the ellipse and the hyperbola. And then we're going to kind of tie all of this together and look at some other definitions too. All right, so I'm going to close it out there. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, good luck on the problem set and quiz.